Here's one that was sent in by Jessica Williams. Thank you, Jessica. It is from Yahoo Answers user. Oh, they are anonymous. So I'm going to call them uh, Sally. Sally asks, was I right to leave the party because there was nowhere for me to sit? Yesterday, my grandma had a party at her house. My whole family went and extended family too. It started at like 10 a.m. and I got there at 12 p.m. I drove there to find there were no seats. I walked in the backyard and everyone was sitting down and I got offended because no one offered me a seat. I would have had to stand up the whole time, so I got my car and left. Was I right to do that? Now the whole family is talking about me and thinks I'm weird. Here's the thing that Sally was it. Mm-hmm. Isn't telling us it's not her family. Oh, I see. She mm. showed up and was like, "Oh, she's back," and she's like, huh, "No one's giving me a seat." And she left, and everyone was super relieved. Yeah. Um, also, Sally is a baby black bear who <laughs> just keeps coming onto my lot and keeps falling in my swimming pool and uh, scaring my my child a lot. Uh, that's possible. It could also be that you showed up two hours late to your grandma's radical party. And so maybe you don't mm -hmm. get, maybe you just don't get a seat. How long one. was grandma's party going that two hours was an acceptable window to you? Did grandma put 10 a.m. to question mark? You get ratty all day. Now, if it's a Memorial Day thing in Ironton, that's kind of a come and go situation. Like you can come, because you're going to be going to all the neighbor's houses. Yes, especially you know, if it's on the parade window. route. Oh, forget, oh, forget about, about it. Yeah. Especially if you've got an easily accessible bathroom. People are going to be hitting you up all day long. Hey, Bill. Uh, it's Steve. Yeah, whatever. Where's the crowd for you? Uh, of course. <laughs> yeah. Love it. So good catching up. I got to shoot a dick awesome. real quick. Dope. Thank you for your service. I never actually... Can I shit in here? <laughs> <laughs> That's a closet. Okay. Um, This would be... Generally speaking, is it okay to leave a party because there's nowhere... For you to sit. I certainly, in my uh, collegiate days, before I learned how to speak to other human beings, I left parties for far less reasonable reasons than this reason. Mm -hmm. Like too drunk reason. Too drunk or someone showed up who looked like someone that I had beef <laughs> with, but it didn't end up to be them. There were drones there. Or you thought or you, or you, you thought you heard an ice cream truck. You thought you heard That's an ice another... cream truck. You got to chase that shit down. Gotta see what's happening out there. I um, think that I I think that rather than tell someone like if, if someone's like, "Hey Sally, why'd you leave the party?" Don't say there weren't enough seats there. Say I knew there were more seats somewhere else. Oh, and that well, that's that's what put a positive spin right. on and it. And it's like I'm still at the party. I'm just sitting down at my house now. I have annexed my house as part of your party because that's where I knew the seat was. What if you told him you went to buy more chairs, but the chair store had burned down? Oh, yeah. So you went home because it was very far away from the original party. Yeah. You can do what I do whenever I show up to any social function, uh, which is walk into the room and introduce my presence and then just very, very slowly start sitting down wherever I am and hope that somebody puts a chair under me. <laughs> and I make a big deal out of it. Like, oh. How often does that work? Oh, no. Here I go gonna oh, i hope i don't smash my tuchus on the ground <laughs> someone please. please give me a thing to land oh no i'm almost losing my balance think of my tuchus now griffin you have broken your coccyx like 80 times right uh i don't it's really just kind of a metal it's <laughs> kind of mo mostly just a truck hitch back there at this point <laughs> which is Wait, cool because yeah, i can you can pull a trailer yeah i can get a boat down to the river um, just on myself, That's which is nice. exciting. Um, I would leave the party because I don't want to stand up while a bunch of sitters in the same way that I do not want to be the only person sitting at the party talking to a bunch of pizones. I would, I would find someplace lower to sit down. Like oh, if, like if everybody's sitting on a chair, you could sit on like a footstool. You know what I mean? So now it's like, I'm even more comfortable than you are. Damn, Trav, that's funky and relatable. Shit. Thank you. Twisted, too, I'd say. Thank you. Well, Why not this is what I bring to the party. Get a shovel and start digging a hole you can sit in. <laughs> yeah. Do that. The lowest just one is- lay the... down and look up at your grandma. The lowest, the lower you are, the cooler you are. Because yes. you're closer to the center of the earth where it's hot, baby. 
And maybe just grab the whole bowl of potato salad and pop a fork in there. No need for a plate. Yeah, don't leave. That's not going to get even with them. These motherfuckers want to be chair hogs. <laughs> I think you, I think you got to just upend the uh, the hot dog tray. I think a good way to get a bunch of people standing up who are sitting is just walk in and say, oh, sitting, huh? And then just don't say anything else as you look around the room slowly. Mm. That would work on me. I'd be like, wait, what is it? What's wrong with, oh, is she Charles sitting? Oh, she yeah, that's really bad for you. I heard that sitting for five minutes is like having 30 heart attacks. Whoa. Is what I saw in the news. Yeah. I'm a stander. The problem is, is then once people start standing up with you, you can't then sit, <laughs> sit down like, oh, you know what? I'm going to risk it. <laughs> I read another story. They've updated. The science has changed. You know science. The science on sitting is different now. Oh, you know what I love when confronted with my grandma and her rude chair stealing ways is you get a whoopee cushion under there. Oh my God, this sounds so funny. Nobody talk. You, well, you gotta blow it up first and you don't want to see them to see you do that. So go in the bathroom and say like, I've got a shit. And then you go in the bathroom and you blow up a whoopee cushion. Um, but do make it seem like you're actually doing the deed because they're going to be like, what are you doing in there? Blowing up a whoopee cushion. And so, you know, roll the toilet paper roll a few times and tear a piece off so that they think. Spend some time praying loudly. Well, no, that's I'm talking about usual bathroom stuff. And so you yeah, me f- too. flush it down and wash your hands good, but you don't have to. You can just turn the water on. And really, you can do that anywhere, but that's a whole different pro tip. And then you're going to go outside and everybody's sitting in the chairs. And at this point, the whoopee cushion's in your belly um, and up in your shirt. And um, you're going to walk out. And you better do it to grandma because it's going to be the funniest. Like, it's funnier when an older person um, passes gas. Yes, yes, yes. You are going to go stand behind them or maybe crawl behind them so everybody else doesn't see you. And once you get there, um, you're going to have to get that whoopee cushion under uh, granny's behind. Yes. Now, and this was this is the part of your plan I'm most interested in, <laughs> yeah, if I'm sure. being honest. Sure, sure, sure. So we're talking about what is a whoopee cushion? Well, I'm glad you asked me that very question. It's just a bag full of air. And what is air known for? It can fill any space that it occupies. And so if you just put it sort of against your granny's thigh and the chair, the surface... <laughs> And you just kind of start pushing that big balloon against her hiney. Uh, it's going to get under there eventually. The question is, what is there to distracting her against this very obvious sensation? That's the obvious question. I know you think I'm a real goofball by suggesting this. Another thing yeah. you need in this situation is a pill caddy full of bees. Okay. Yes. A pill caddy full of bees. Yeah, and you're just going to start opening those up one by one. And once they start getting bored with one bee, you open up Tuesday bee, Wednesday bee, Saturday, Thursday bee. Um, if you so, don't, Griffin, why not just have... Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> why not then just have a box of bees? Because um, it's harder to catch a box full of bees. If you open up a box, Travis... <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Even a small box, like a box for shoes. Uh, and then fucking seven bees fly out. People uh-huh. will be like, that was not <laughs> unimpressive. <laughs> but if you throw a pill caddy for one week down and you then walk over to what you've just thrown down and one by one open all the doors. It it does heighten the scare factor because people will look at it and think, oh, my God, that's a week's worth of bees. <laughs> So, it's so many. So you would, all at once. would open one B, right? Yeah. B. Then you would go and scoot some more of the cushion underneath Grandma. Oh and no! People it, are getting it. bored. You go back out to the center room. Open uh, Monday B. Now and then you go yeah. back more cushion. Exactly. The problem is that you've chosen a target who is maybe the least mobile person at the event, and so you need to confront yourself with the reality that this thing. This dog just is not going to hunt even no matter if you have t- something ridiculous like two full pill caddies full of bees. And so at that point, your granny's going to catch you and it'll do the funny exclamation point thing like in Metal Gear Solid. And she'll be like, what do you do? And she'll be like, what do you do? And then that's when you just take the whoopee cushion back and you just squeeze it so that the little rubber lips of it is blowing the fart uh, like at her uh, derriere. And that's going to be... Not ideal, obviously, but you get something out of it. So, my only sadness is that you've edited all this out, and no one will ever get to hear any of this madness. That's the only thing that makes me sad. Uh, no, I think that one made the cut. 
It did. Oh, that was in there. Imagine my surprise. 